Blue screen is the method for putting actors or other objects into a background scene. Although blue is the most commonly used colour, it's also possible to use green or white or other colours. We start with a blue screen. Uh, more about the materials later, and perhaps a, a good looking actor. The scene is first filmed and then put into a computer or Casablanca system. We now put in the background scene and use the superimposing software. There are many versions, but I find the simpler systems much easier to use and the results can still be very good. The computer now takes out all the blue parts of the top scene and replaces them with the background scene. And what we get is... While you're at it, you can make your subject smaller or larger, move it around or even have it upside down. Now for screen materials. Blue paper works well, but go for a very intense colour. It's also possible to use blue cloth, but you must avoid creases and wrinkles. Lycra is easy to stretch over a frame to give a crease-free screen. You can even use the blue sky on a cloudless day, and preferably with a polarising filter over the camera lens. You don't get screens much bigger than that. Now for clothing. Obviously anything blue must be avoided as it will become transparent. The best colours are pale yellows, browns and reds as they stand out better against the background. It's also important to watch out for minor things like blue ties and jewellery that can become transparent. Also metallic objects that can reflect blue light from the screen. And sorry but no blue eyed blondes. Lighting is very important and it's essential to illuminate the blue screen as evenly as possible. Daylight works quite well, but it's often not feasible. Indoors, a powerful floodlight at the far end of the room can give good lighting, perhaps supplemented by smaller floodlights closer to the screen. It's also helpful to have side lights to illuminate the edges of the subject and give crisp delineation between it and the background scene. Shadows. It's often hard to avoid shadows from falling onto the blue screen. If you want them to appear in the final scene, this can be quite useful as the software will then put them in automatically. Otherwise, it's important to avoid shadows by placing your subject far enough away from the blue screen. If you can, use manual exposure and especially manual colour balance. Set it to the tungsten light setting for indoor shooting or the blue screen will fool the system and make everything too yellow. A final point to consider at the shooting stage is to match the foreground and background. The closer they are in brightness and contrast, the better. Also, try to match lighting directions and quality. Once in the computer, the two scenes are placed on the timeline, with a blue screen on top. Choose blue screen for the transparency setting and play with the controls until you get a clean edge around the subject and no ghosting or transparent regions. But it's still worth fine-tuning to get the best effect. If your blue screen isn't large enough to fully fill the frame, you can mask off the edges later in the computer. It's important, though, to make sure that all the area immediately behind the subject is fully covered with blue screen. Blue screen is not confined to just one subject and one background. You can add as many layers as you want to give dramatic effects. So, give it a try! So, let's have a look at a couple of films that have used quite a few blue screen and similar special effects. And after each, we'll see how some of them were achieved.